My talk is about Jakarta E10. I'll, I'll talk about how to get there and a little bit of what to expect from later version. And I have a little bonus demo for if, uh, are there any Spring developers here? Yeah, so you'll be interested in some parts of this. That's good. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Ivar Grimstad. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at Eclipse Foundation. I do talks about Jakarta E. Uh, these are my, my social media coordinates. If you want to engage with me there, I'm usually responsive, I hope. Uh, I'm in, uh, involved in a lot of uh, open source communities, as you can see here. Uh, and uh, let's just dive into it. And by the way, a, a tip for getting a free conference t-shirt without rating sessions is actually become a speaker and go down and ask for one, then you get one. Well, uh, Jakarta 10 was released in September last year, so it's about six months old. Uh, and uh, that was the, the first release where we uh, did some new functionality since uh, Jakarta E was moved over to Eclipse Foundation. And when we talk about Jakarta E, what we talk about is specifications. We also talk about implementations, but that's kind of a, a, a different thing. Jakarta E is, is about the specifications. And with specifications in Jakarta E, they're uh, composed out of, out of three uh, artifacts. And that's the specification document, it's an API specification, and it's a TCK or test compatibility kit. And the test compatibility kit is a set of tests that tests that a implementation implements what is written in the specification document and defined in the API and, and fulfills all the requirements there. And then when it passes the TCK, it's a compatible implementation. And we need at least one open source compatible implementation to ratify a final specification. After that, it can be commercial licensed uh, product that implements the specification, but we need at least one open source. And to date, most of them are open source anyway. And Jakarta E10 is about a lot of specifications. And this is the complete Jakarta E10 platform. And uh, all the blue ones here were updated in 10. And as you can see, that's the majority of them. The, the gray ones weren't updated. That doesn't mean they're less relevant or anything. It just meant that they were good as they were for now. They may be updated later. And the ones with a dot zero after the, the, in the version number are major updates. And we are kind of moving towards a semantic versioning of these specifications. So a dot zero, uh, if, if there are breaking changes, there will be a dot zero, a, a major release. Uh, there may be a major release without a break and change. That's uh, kind of how we're uh, discussing how to signal that it's not a break and change. But if, if it's a minor update like the dot one releases here, there are no break and changes at all. There's one new specification down in the corner called CDI Lite. And it's not a specification on its own, really, but it's, it's, it's part of the CDI specification as a subset. And I'll uh, get back to CDI Lite uh, in, uh, in, uh, the, uh, later in this talk. And if I take away the more enterprise-y uh, bits of, of the specification, what I'm left with is the Jakarta E10 web profile. And these specifications are specifications that are targeting more traditional web applications. So we have specifications for yeah, everything from persistence and, and RESTful endpoints, but also UIs and, and uh, JSPs and, and whatnot. If I take away all the UI or, or traditional webby specifications, I'm left with a stack of specifications that are targeting microservices or headless services uh, or, or smaller runtimes. And that's the brand new Jakarta E10 core profile. And this is the first time we introduced a new core profile since Java EE6, when web profile was introduced. So this is an entirely new thing. Uh, and uh, I'll uh, go into to, um, uh, core profile in a bit, uh, but I'll, I'll go through a couple of these specifications, not all of them, uh, before we dive into the demo. And security uh, got some interesting uh, updates for this one. It's mostly about uh, evolving the APIs and, and adding features. It's already at version 3.0, but it's really only between 3.0 and, and 1.0. This is the first ver version where they add stuff, because between 1.0 and 2.0 is just about the namespace. But what they added for this release is support for OpenID Connect. And you may have used OpenID Connect in Jakarta EA applications before, but in a non-standard way. So now it's, it's a standard way, and it's movable across implementations. 
And security is actually three specifications. It's also authorization and authentication. But these are more lower level SPIs that you as application developers aren't that exposed to. It's more for the uh, implementers that implement the security APIs that we as application developers are using. And the OpenID Connect, this is an example of how uh, that is uh, defined. It's defined in the application, so it's totally application developer controlled. It supports expression language and, and, and uh, so, so you can read the properties from anywhere outside of your application. But you can specify what properties you want to have to configure your open ID, ID authentication mechanism definition, which is the entire name of this very precise annotation. So persistence. Persistence is a minor update, so there are absolutely no breaking changes there. They're adding features and evolving the APIs here as well. And wh uh, what they added was something that the, user, the community has requested for a long time, and that is to be able to use UIDs as basic Java types. So you can now directly use a UID without any conversion back and forth in your code. So this kind of simplifies uh, that uh, a lot. It's a small change, but it's a good change. There were also other changes though. But uh, for Jakarta RESTful of the services, uh, they initially targeted a 4.0 release, which would break backwards compatibility because they want to re uh, uh, replace some of their uh, uh, resource injection mechanisms with CDI. But they decided on, now let's keep compatibility for now and do that in next uh, version. So, so they updated the API with some stuff that the, uh, the community has requested, such as uh, support for multi-part form data, which has been possible to do in rest -Easy or GRC before, but now it's standard, so, so you can move between implementations. And they also added a new cool thing, which is the Java SE Bootstrap API. And, and this makes, a, it makes it possible to bootstrap a, a Jakarta REST full web service without using an application server. You can just do it, do it uh, with, with uh, normal Java SE. And I'll demo this. And this application is very simple. It just prints a message through a RESTful endpoint with JSON. So I'm using JSON binding and Jakarta REST. And I'm, I'm pulling in REST easy here. Uh, uh, you could have used uh, GRC as well. Let's have a look at this one. So this application, first I'll show the POM file. So it is, uh, it's a jar, which is kind of special in, in, the, in the Jakarta e world, world. We usually uh, deal with uh, web archives, but uh, this is a, a Java archive. I'm using the shared plugin there. You can use any packaging stuff that gives you a jar with a main method. Uh, and I'm uh, pulling in the Jakarta RESTful API 3.1, and also the REST easy. Uh, implementation classes, and, and I need the, the core REST easy functionality, and also I need the web part, which is an undertow, and also the JSON binding to do the JSON stuff. So, so, so here, you, it's kind of like in the spring world, you have to pull in the dependencies of the stuff you're using. And, and you're, you're responsible for uh, that they work together yourself. So the, the, the application is uh, very straightforward. It's, uh, it, it is a regular Jakarta REST application. So there's nothing special about Java SE bootstrapping yet here. This, this could be deployed into any application server. It, it has a, 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 just a, a data class uh, and uh, returns this uh, with a, uh, a get request and produces application JSON. So it's a very small, simple application. And this could be deployed into any uh, web server and, and would be running fine. But let's do this uh, from uh, Java SE itself. And then we need a main method. So I'll add a main method. And luckily, from Java 21, you don't need public static void main. You can do the simple main. So it would be even easier. Uh, but, but we're on 20 now. So. Uh, and the first thing I, I'm, I'm doing is instantiating the application. And now I, I, my main application is the application. So, so here I'm, I'm instantiating uh, myself. So, so I'll just. Um, uh, uh, create a, an instance of the complete Duke application, which is this class. So I have that one. Then I'll, I'll configure my application. And um, that uh, here I can configure uh, a lot of stuff, but what I'm um, limiting myself to here is support number and, and root path. Uh, and then I'll start it. And here it's, it's a little bit more complicated, but, but it's really uh, f fairly, fairly uh, easy. It's, I, I call the SE bootstrap start, and then I pass in the app and the config, and then I just 
uh, uh, wait for it until I press Control C. Because there's, there's no magic uh, going on here. So if I open this in a, a command line, let's go this one and uh, just package it, uh, Maven clean package. So it, it builds and uh, then I just run it, uh, the, um, the, the runnable jar that I've got. And you see it starts very, uh, very quickly up and uh, if, I, if I access it in, in the browser, let me see, booty dick there. You see, it, it produces the message. So it's a very simple way to get a simple uh, web service up and running. And if you need a database, you just add that dependency and you, or whatever you need for stuff. So you don't need an application server. That's the point of this. So core profile. Core profile is targeting smaller runtimes. So you see the theme here with, with the E10 is lighter, smaller, more uh, cloud friendly. Right? So, so we have the SD boot trip you can do if you have a really small thing. If you want something a little bit more advanced and want to have an implementation uh, that ensures that everything works together, uh, Core Profile is the way to go. And Core Profile is uh, about uh, the specification that I mentioned before. It's the RESTful web services. And then you have the JSON specs, the uh, annotation interpreters, and dependency injection is just to glue everything together. And then we have CDI Lite. And and for, for Jakarta Core Profile, currently, we have these four uh, compatible products, Web, uh, WebSphere, Open Liberty, Payara, and Wildfly. And these were maybe not the runtimes we were had, had in mind when we configured um, Core Profile. These are the usual application servers. The, the ones we had in mind and what, uh, the ones we were hoping for in the future is, is implementations like Helodon, Quarkus, Micronaut, and et cetera. And, and I think Quarkus is very close Helodon has promised that they will uh, certify. So we may see in, in near future these being sort of our project on, uh, products on uh, Core Profile. And that's what we were aiming for. And, and one of the key specifications in Core Profile was CDI Lite. And CDI Lite, it, it, besides being smaller than CDI, is also designed to work in more restricted environments. And with more restricted uh, environments, we mean we want to do all the dynamic stuff that the CDI does at runtime. We want to do that at build time. And you probably see where I'm going uh, with this if you've been to some of the Graal VM talks today. So if you can resolve all the dynamic features at, at build time, we can build, uh, build native images on, on Jakarta EE. And, and that's kind of the, the whole idea behind CDI Lite. So there is a new extensions API that will do this dynamic stuff at build time. And uh, they changed the nature of the Beans XML just to make it easier. And this is the, the big breaking change in Jakarta 10, that a empty Beans XML doesn't mean all anymore. It means annotated. So be aware there if you're upgrading. And they remo removed some stuff. But, but uh, this is, this is the, the, the core thing of core profile. So. Let's go into uh, some, some demos. And I, I want to take a couple of steps back and, and start with, with uh, a previous version and see how we can get to 10. And then I'll uh, do some spring stuff afterwards. So how many here are using Jakarta EE uh, 8 or earlier? Nobody. 9. Nobody there either. 10. OK. Spring then. Yeah, some of you. OK. So, be patient, this makes sense for Spring as well. So, and, and, the, and the, the key here from, uh, from uh, 8 to 9 is, is the, the namespace change from JavaX to Jakarta. And, and uh, why should a Spring developer care? Well, it turns out that most of the stuff you're using in Spring have some kind of relationship with, with Jakarta EE. So, so you're probably running, if you're using Spring Boot, you're running in Tomcat or Jetty. Uh, you're probably using uh, yeah, which is on Jakarta namespace now, by the way. If you're, uh, because it's a Jakarta web container. If you're using like uh, Hibernate for persistence or, or validation, ORM or, or validation, uh, you are now on the Jakarta namespace because that's an implementation of Jakarta persistence and Jakarta bean validation. So, so, so it is relevant for the entire ecosystem. And luckily, we also have some tooling that can do this stuff for us, so we don't even have to touch the code, and that's transformation. 
And, and we have the Eclipse Transformer and the Apache Tomcat migration tool. And we have some other products, uh, both commercial and non-commercial out there, that will take the bytecode for you and transform it. So, so, so if you have a, a war uh, archive or, or a jar or whatever, you can just pass it through these, and they will do the bytecode transformation for you, and you can run it on the Jigar namespace without even touching the code. You, you also have uh, support in the IDEs, like, like IntelliJ, for example, has this uh, uh, Java EE to Jakarta EE migration path. It should be Java X to Jakarta migration because it works for Spring as well. But this is something you can use if, uh, if you're using IntelliJ. You can just open rewrite, which is an open source tool that, that will uh, uh, fix the bytecode for you. Uh, so, so or this one actually takes the source code, I, I can't remember, but it's, it's a cool project, you should check it, and, and they're working with it. You can also do it manually, and that's what I'm going to do here, or part of it manually. And that is to update the POM file, fix the imports, XML, and et cetera, et cetera. And I'll go through each of these steps in my talk here in the demo. And uh, to do this, I have a demo application, and I deliberately haven't made this application too simple. So it is a hem hello world application, yes, but it also has all the kind of stuff that you usually have in an enterprise application. It has a database, it has a, a repository with uh, Jakarta persistence, it has a business service layer in, in Jakarta Enterprise Beans or, or EJBs, and it has a Jakarta REST layer that produces uh, JSON binding. I also have some CDI uh, extensions there, but I, I gather not many actually write CDI extensions, so I'll jump that demo very quickly. Uh, and uh, I'll just go uh, through step by step. So, first close this one. Um, and this application is uh, called Complete Duke. It's very similar to uh, the one we looked at, the, the SA Boots rep. The difference here is this is a, a, a web archive. Uh, and uh, this one does only has a provider dependency on Jakarta 8 because, well, you don't need the implementations in Jakarta. That's kind of the cool thing. You just depend on the APIs and the implementation there for you. So, so the POMs in Jakarta E is always like 40 uh, lines, lines of XML, so it's, it's not a big deal. So the first thing, uh, I'll, I'll go through the, 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 the code as well. The application, oh no, no this is the booty duke. The application class is exactly the same as the, the, the one in, um, in the uh, SE Bootstrap. This is just an uh, application, it's empty here. Uh, and uh, I have a the Duke resource with uh, the REST endpoint has a, this get endpoint that produces application JSON. Rather than hard coding it here, it, it uses the EJB, the Duke service, to 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 find it with the find greetings method. And this is an EJB. You can see that with this at stateless annotation. And this one injects a repository, and then uh, uh, finds all from the repositories goes through them, finds the first one. If there isn't the first one, it will hard code. So this is the, the business logic of, of it all. The, the, the find all method is a uh, Jakarta persistence using the criteria uh, language. So, so, so what I'm doing here is select everything from this Duke's greeting and return it. And, and the Duke's greeting, that's my entity. So this is a Jakarta uh, persistence entity. It has an ID. I'm using a, a, a long here, I could have used an, an UID, but now I'm, I'm currently on eight, so, so ID is, is probably what I am. It has a message and an email and getters and setters. So, so that's all there is about it. Uh, I also have the, the, um, the CDI extension, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass through that uh, for, for uh, time constraints. So if I want to upgrade this to nine, it's fairly simple. I just go and update it to 9.1. We did a 9.0 release as well, but 9.1 was for uh, Java 11. So, so, so now we're also moving from 8 to 11, but it runs on 8 as well. So I'll just stay on 8 so far, and I'll bump the versions uh, in a while. So I upgraded this one. And what we can see then is it, it starts to get compilation fail, uh, failures. And that's because the namespace has been changed. So, so uh, the easiest way to, to fix this one is to use this migration from Java to Jakarta E, just choose the, the, the project I want to run it on, and then do the refactoring, and, and IntelliJ does it for me. 
So, so it's, it's fairly straightforward. You can, you can script it, assertion replace, or anything, but the ID does it for you. And it also is careful, it doesn't change the ones that aren't affected by the namespace, because JavaX is still a valid namespace for, for some of the SQL classes and transactions and whatnot. So there are still JavaX in the JDK, so you cannot search and replace everything. So, so this one does it carefully. So what I've done is the two first steps, fix the imports. Uh, there is also something about uh, XML schema namespaces here. That is not that relevant for uh, Spring developers, but you may have some web XML or something somewhere in your, your Spring application as well. Uh, uh, but it depends. And in my case, I don't have a web XML, uh, but I do have a persistent XML. And, and my persistent XML, uh, you can see here, is on the JCP namespace. So this one has to be changed as well. At well. And uh, what we did for uh, Jakarta 9 was to change this to jakarta.ee. So it's the same as our, our web page. So, so here, you just have to change all the, the, the JCP namespaces to, to uh, Jakarta EE. And, and we also went uh, secure here. And the last one, the actual file. Uh, so, so, so uh, Jakarta.de slash schemas is where you find all these schema files nowadays. And, and also in Jakarta.de, we do uh, uh, keep the, the um, uh, version number in the file name, so you're absolutely sure you have the right version. That's been the standard since forever. And now we can see it, it validates here and say that I, I need to actually use the, the, the correct version of the schema as well. So, so this is something you need to do for all the XML files. You could probably automate this as well. But, but uh, a little here and there. And it's not that many XML configurations nowadays anyway. It's usually persistent XML. The next step is properties. So you may notice in, in my, my uh, file here that I have these properties here to generate the test data. So I'm dropping and creating every time I start the server, and then I, I insert the, uh, some test data in my database. So all these properties that has Java X something needs to be changed to Jakarta something. And this is very relevant and, and, and good to, be, to know about in Spring as well, because Jakarta Persistence or JPA is something you, you're using every day, probably, if you're using Hibernate. And you may have some caching settings, like, uh, like uh, uh, cache timeout or, or caching strategy or something. And that's javax.caching strategy. And now it's jakarta.caching strategy. So you need to change your property file. So into application properties or whatever it is, you configure the, uh, these stuff. And, and check if you have any, any, any JavaX stuff. And since you don't use XML, you won't get uh, the, the, the validation that is wrong either. So, so this is kind of, you need to know where they are. They will probably, you, otherwise you'll, you'll discover them at runtime. Uh, th then there is a kind of a special thing uh, with uh, Jakarta EE. Um, I don't know uh, how, how much this is for, for Spring, but these are the bootstrapping files. And to be honest, in, in my car career, as 20 years with the, or plus with Jakarta EE, I, I never really wrote any CDI extensions in my kind of professional life. I just did it for this demo. And, and, but, but there are some out there. And CDI extensions are bootstrapped with a file that is called Java X Enterprise Inject SPI extension. And, and you have the fully qualified class name of the extension there. So if you have this kind of bootstrapping files, I'm not aware of, of many others that, uh, than this, uh, you need to rename this one also to Jakarta. So, so, so it, it's just some, a corner case if, if you have this stuff. So now I'm, I'm uh, pretty much OK here. Uh, I'll uh, take the... the um, the, the, uh, the application up, and I'll just stop the, the server I have running, because that's the old version. We don't want that anymore. And I'll deploy it to Glasswish 6, which is on, on um, uh, Jakarta 9. So I'll add the, and I do everything manually here. Usually, you would just save, and it will, will, will update. But um, you should be able to see if I actually do the deploy here. Deploy. So, when it deploys, you can see here it, it does this print in the in the log. That's a, the CDI extension magic. But in in my in my uh, application here, it's on it's on eighty eighty two yes, and it's called complete duke hello, and it says uh, as you expected uh, how did Jakarta eight. 
Nobody reacted. I just upgraded to nine, right? So, so, so the sixth one, verify some dynamic data. You may read stuff from the database, right? You may read these properties files and concatenate things. You may read fully qualified class names and do reflection on them. You never know what you do. I mean, people do stupid things all the time. I, and uh, I certainly do. And sometimes you do weird things, and that is totally up to that application, what you have done. So in some cases, you need to verify this dynamic data, and that is something I cannot help here other than say, you have to verify and check that you're not doing any dynamic stuff, that you need to change JavaX to Jakarta. And in this case, it's just to change uh, the, um, the output text, and, and that's fairly uh, simple. If I can just find the database here. There you go. So I should be able to query data here. So my data here says, how did you call E8? So I can, I can change this one to, to 9. Or since we're going to 10 later, I'll, I'll update it to 10 already. And, and just uh, submit it. And, and, and now it works. So, so it depends on how your application is, what data you have to, to, to upgrade. Um, so next step is to take this one uh, a step further. Uh, I, I mentioned we were, uh, first, uh, I'll just take this, uh, this um, uh, drop of create table stuff and, and just remove that, because I, I, I don't want to, if I can just press the right keys here. So I, I, I don't want to update from 8 to 10 every time I, I do this. So, so, so I'll, I'll just uh, comment out this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to say, well, let's run this one in 17, because who here is on 8? No, 11. So 17? 20? Yeah. 21 early access? Yeah, cool. You're my hero. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just take, take uh, go to 17 first. So, so, so I'll, I'll uh, 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 update the, the, uh, the uh, code here. And, and since I've done to 17, I can start using 17 stuff. So, so I'll start uh, doing that. Uh, and I'll add a, uh, a record. I'll call it Duke's greeting record. Uh, and there, this one will have a string message and a local date, uh, date. So, so I've, I've created uh, my record. And what I want to do is, rather than exposing my, my, my REST API with the, with the database entity, I'll, I'll expose the, the record, which is always a good uh, idea to do this, uh, to not, not expose your database through the API. And, and then I have to fix the compilation uh, error, so my, my business logic has to be fixed to, to this record as well. Um, and here I'll do the mapping, so I'll uh, find the first one and then I'll, I'll map it from, uh, from the, the, uh, the greeting to uh, a Duke's greeting. And I'll get the message and I'll use um, local date uh, dot now. And also, if it's not found, I have, I'm hard coding the record. I'm just taking the, this one, and I'll use uh, local date now here as well. So, so th this is, uh, I, I see I have a comma here. So, so th here I do, um, uh, do the, the, the um, there, I, I do the conversion. So now I, I read up an entity from database and I convert it to a record. And I, I think we're a little bit short of time. Who, who, how many were at JFall uh, last year? Nobody, yeah, so you saw it before. But this will actually not work. And, and the reason for that is, is that records, uh, the, the message and date field get a method called message and date. And since in all the versions of, of the application server or JSON implementation, they adhere to the Java beans pattern. So they uh, expect a getter. And, and a, a trick to, to get around this 
uh, to, 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 to fool uh, JSON binding is, is to call it get message and, and, and get data. Get date, like, like this. And that, then you'll trick JSON binding to, to, to think it, it, it is a, it is a actual uh, getter. And, th and this is not a, uh, a, a, not a, a Jakari specific thing. This is has, uh, it's about JSON binding. So now you see I have a getter here for those two. So, so this is kind of a, a trick to, to get it to work. Uh, I'll just go to the Glassfish and uh, redeploy it. So it's, it seems to be up and running. And I can now say, and you see it works. And now it has a date and a message. And you see it, it is date and message. It's not get date and get message. But we don't stop there. Because now I'm, I'm, I'm on 9, and I promised 10. So let's uh, move further and uh, find the, 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 uh, the, the um, version number here and change this one to 10. So, so now I'm gone, gone, gone to 10. And in, in 10, uh, actually, this isn't needed anymore, because they're, they fixed it in, in the implementations there. We haven't really specified it in the specification. Uh, but the implementations have fixed it, so, so in, in 11 we will specify that this is how it should behave. Uh, but now it just it happens by, by uh, more or less uh, coincidence. So, so uh, uh, I, d I don't have, really have to do any uh, coding changes here, uh, other than uh, uh, stopping the, the, um, uh, the EA9 server, start uh, Glass with 7, and, and deploy the application here. So, so, so when, I, when I've done that, deploy, and, and uh, open it up here. Now it's on, on port 8080. There. It will fail miserably. And, and uh, why do you think that? It gets some weird message. Uh, happening down here, and you can you can go through the the um, the the, um, the 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 stack trace and, and figure it out, and it will eventually say some CDI stuff. Uh, but but what's happening here? If you remember, there is a backwards incompatible change between nine and ten, and that's beans XML. Right? So so in this case, I don't have a beans XML because previously we allowed. Uh, a non-existent beans XML to, to mean the same as an empty beans XML. And an empty beans XML means it's annotated and CDI is activated. If it doesn't, if it doesn't find a beans XML, it won't even activate the CDI. So, so what I have to do is to add a beans XML file. And it's actually always a, a, good, um, a good practice to, to have a a, um, a beans XML because then it can be explicit about what you're doing, and and in in IntelliJ now it, they actually give you a, a, a CDI4 version if you just create a beans XML and it's empty so it's annotated and all my classes are annotated so this is all I all I have to do uh, in order to to get my my application running. So I'll just redeploy this one and go there, and now it works. So, so this, is, this is the only tricky thing between 9 and 10, is the bin XML file. That's what you have to remember. So the bonus demo, finally, hey? some spring. And this is actually a scenario four in a bigger application, in a bigger talk. And if you want the full version, you, you should come to the Amsterdam Jug tomorrow afternoon. After the conference here is over at 6 o'clock, we, we're doing this, uh, this talk where we do all the spring stuff. Uh, now I'll just do it, the quick version very, very fast. So I'm having a, a Spring Boot 2 application, and I'm going to move it to Spring Boot 3. There is something with this Spring uh, application that you usually have in a Spring uh, application, and that is it has some dependencies, and also has some libraries. And I'm going to uh, move this over from Spring Boot 2 to Spring Boot 3. So if you we, if we look at, at this application, it, it is also very simple. It's been uh, um, fetched from, uh, generated from, from the uh, Spring, Spring Boot starter. And let's look at the, the, the POM file. It's 278. That's a, a sort of the, the previous version. It's 2 at least. And it has these dependencies, Duke Dep and Duke Live, and also an in-memory database. So this is, this is all 
uh, that is about this one. And the application itself just is a Spring Boot application. It just starts. And it has a, a REST interface, which is using a repository that comes from one of the dependencies. It comes, it comes from the, uh, um, yeah, w w one of the um, uh, Duke Dep or Duke Lib. Uh, and uh, uh, it has a slash users. It validates the input, uh, creates an account, and, and just does some, some printing. And, it's, and it also has a, has a getter, so you can list the users. So it's, it's a very simple, small application. So if, if I start this one uh, and, and do some, some HTTP requests here, so, so first I can uh, just list the users. Let me get users. You can see. Uh, Oh, I have Glassfish running on, on the port. I should stop Glassfish. Uh, here. Kill Glassfish. Stop. We don't want port conflicts. And I guess I have to restart this one as well. There we go. So there we go. So if I, a list of users is empty. If I add a user. It, it's user valid. It, it prints uh, create a user, so so everything is fine. If 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 it is a invalid uh, email, it says bad request, not valid user. So it, that's the validation. It's a very simple application, uh, and and now if if I list them, it only lists one. So so it it, it works. It does what uh, what it's supposed to do, and the the Duke dependency is the one that has the the account repository, and the account repository is just a a, uh, a, a Spring Data, and and it just uh, and it has this this account uh, that has a, a an email and a name. So so it's a very simple application. Uh, everything generated from the the, the caveat here is that the do lib the library is I don't have the source code for that one. So so and and this could be a case in in your uh, your application as well that you have some dependencies in your organization. You have the source codes available, so we can do this stuff with them. But, but the library, well, that's something we got from internet. It's something Maven gave us, you know? And, and we don't know who created it or, or where the source is. And I definitely don't have the source for it. Who, who's, who saved the source of their dependencies, right? So, 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 so if I want to do this, uh, I just have to rely on that's where the validation stuff happens. Uh, which is mostly the case in Spring World. You just drag in the stuff with dependencies, right, and then trust them. So, uh, so and that was uh, that was me as Jacari. Don't don't record that. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll upgrade to. Um, I'm just kidding. You can record everything. So uh, I upgraded to to three one one. And uh, uh, that is uh, uh, all I'm doing. So so that should be good, right? I've gone through two to three. So, so, so uh, let's um, uh, compile it and see how it goes. And it fails. It cannot find uh, the, the symbol valid. And, and, uh, and that is in, in my uh, REST application here. You see, it, it can't find JavaX valid anymore. That's because it's Jakarta validation that is used now. So here I, I can use the, the, the ID to do everything here, but um, let's just uh, do this manually. And um, also, since I kind of have the source code here, I, I see that this account is an JPA entity. I have a lot of stuff here as well. So I have to change this one as well. And, and as, as you can see, the, you can use the, the uh, migration stuff in in IntelliJ to, to uh, fix this uh, in, in Spring as well. So don't be afraid because it says Jakarta on your, on your uh, command line. And, and this fails because I didn't upgrade the Spring version. So, so that is something you, you should do first because he, here you have the, uh, I, I'm also on, on 2.7 here. So let's go to 3.1.1 here as well and update it. And, and it, it still fails, and, and that's because this one drags in the, the Jakarta Persistence API that I'm using for the entity, and, and also the, the validation, Jakarta validation. You can, all, all, you can very often find these in, in your Spring classes if you tick the, the right boxes. So this one has to update it to the Jakarta 9 or 10 versions. 
so, so let's t take the, the uh, uh, letters on, which is uh, 311 for this one and 302 for this one. And if you're not sure which is, which is just, just check Maven Central or Jakarta EE web websites where you can find the versions. So now it compiles. Let's uh, uh, go to the, um, uh, where you go, and, and compile the Spring Boot application. Oh, there's one thing more I have to do. I, I actually have to, to, to take the, the dependency, the Duke Dep, uh, and uh, fix that version number. So this is version one. So I'll upgrade this to version two. I'll do the, the, the Maven install to so get it in the uh, Maven repository. Uh, and then I have to go in my uh, Duke boot application and pull in the version 2.0 of this dependency. And then I'll do a, a clean package of this one. And there we go, it runs, fine. So it compiles, then who cares about testing? It runs. So, so when I started it, what I'm going to do is just list the users. You can see there are no users, which is expected. Let's add a user, the dukes.com email address. It's valid, so you can also see it has created one with ID1. What if I put in an invalid user? Oh, user is valid. Oh, cool. I can add invalid emails. What's happening here? So now I have crap in my database. It compiled. So what, what's happening here is that the Duke dependency is the one that has the, the, the user class. And, and the user class is the one we validate here. So the user has some bean validation stuff in it. But I don't have the source code. But luckily, we have the transformers. Remember those? So what we can do here is to transform it. And first, I'll, I'll just. Uh, uh, in, the, um, in, in, the, in my Maven repositories, uh, I have the, 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 the Duke lib is, is here. It's 1 to 0. So what I'm going to do is to get that 1 to 0 and transform it and, and release it as a 2 to 0. So, so I'll, I'll just go here, copy. Uh, sorry. Sorry. See if I can have it in my... So I'm copying the, the Duke lib 1 to 0 to this folder. Uh, and then I'll, I'll run the transformer for it. And what I've done is to, to download the trans Eclipse transformer from a web page. It's a jar. So I can run it from there. I can also run it as, as a Maven uh, plugin. But I'll do the, the jar version there. I've downloaded it to my tools folder. So, so, um, so I'll, I'll just uh, uh, run it there. You can see I, I'm, I'm using Java jar and then the Eclipse transformer CLI. And I have the input, it's a Duke jar. That's the only thing I do. And uh, w w what it creates for me is a second jar. And now I have, have these two, two jars here. And if I compare these, uh, let me see here, compare, you can see that the, let's see if I can get this higher up. You can see the, the only difference here is that the Duke's lib has a Java X, the, the 1 to 0, and, and the, the 2 to 0 has a, uh, as, oh, the output file has a Jakarta. So it's changed the validation uh, constraints, which is the email. Right? And, and it has this valid, uh, at, at valid on, uh, on, on the email field on this entity. So, so this is where the, the, the validation happens. And now we can see I've done the transformation of the bytecode. I never saw the source code. So, so what, what I can do now is to, uh, install, uh, to, to install this one in my Maven repository as a version 2.0. Uh, you should be careful about publishing this, you know, because it could be licensed stuff. But in, in an internal repository, you should be fine. So I'm going to... Um, go one, uh, one step back, so I have Maven available, and then I'll Maven install file. So I'm installing the output Duke lib with the same group ID artifact ID, but the version 2.0 to, to my uh, Maven repository. And now I have a version 1.0 and a version 2.0 in my local uh, Maven repository. And then I can, uh, can, can open my 
pom file and upgrade this to version 2.0. And when I've done that, I can rebuild my application. And when it's uh, rebuilt, I'll start it. And I can do the HTTP request uh, here. It creates the, the, uh, the, the valid one. What about the invalid? It fails, like it should be. So now I've, I've actually uh, fixed my application. This is a very, very simple example, but this is stuff you need to be aware of. These tools are cool. So now I've done the transformation and upgraded the versions of the dependencies, and the one I didn't have the source for even. So you can see this list is very similar to the Jakarta namespace list. You also have maybe some properties or dynamic content here as well. So it's a very similar steps, and you can find this on my Jakarta spring uh, on my GitHub. I'll, I'll give the uh, links afterwards. So we have three minutes left, is that right? Yeah, and uh, uh, so I'll just go what's happening after 10, and that is 11. And with 11, we are establishing a, a little bit more permanent release cadence. So we want to release a version of Jakarta E within six months after a Java SE LTS version. And as you know, Java 21 is due in September this year. That means that in March, April next year, we will release Jakarta E 11. At least that's the plan. And we will continue. So in the next two years, of Java SE, then we will release a, a version of Jakarta E half a year after. So about a two-year release cadence following the, the Java SE model. And Java, uh, Jakarta E 11 will be based on uh, 17 or 21. Uh, that's up to the, the APIs, what they want to compile. If they don't compile to a new version, that's, uh, Java is backwards compatible, so that's OK. If you want to use uh, 21 features, that's fine, because we will make sure that the TCK runs on 21. So, so everyone who wants to certify on 11 has to support 21. So this will be the runtime version of Jakarta 11. It's Java SE 21. We are probably not going to add config uh, to this one. They're not in the state that they are ready yet. Uh, MVC is up for discussion. It has been for a while. It could be an, an addition to the web profile. Uh, we're doing that discussions in, in the platform projects. If you have any opinions about this, you should chime in now because this is the time we're deciding this. Uh, Jakarta NoSQL, I have hope for this one. If you want NoSQL in Jakarta E, say so on our mailing list and convince the people that don't want it. Uh, Jakarta RPC uh, is not going to make it here, but that's a standard. If you're interested in this one, join that project and get it moving. Oracle has con contributed a good chunk of code there, but, but uh, the project hasn't been able to carry it forward yet. So if you, if you know RPC and want to contribute, this is a specification that it's desperately need for help. Jakarta data uh, is something I really hope we're going to get. Even if, if we don't get NoSQL, just at least give us data. This is uh, Spring data, but Jakarta data. So we're copying Spring for this one, and we're proud of it. We want that cool stuff in our technology as well. So Jakarta data is standardizing the repository pattern. If you want this in Jakarta E, chime in and say it, because there are someone who doesn't want it, because no, active record is better than repository. You know, well, who cares? We want this now. And so chime in and, and, and say uh, whatever uh, your opinion is, as long as it's, it's mine. Uh, and uh, so uh, to recap, Jakarta E9, What's about the, the namespace? We're, we're through that namespace now. You've seen how easy it is. So, so you can do that. Uh, go home and do it uh, tonight. Uh, Jakarta 10, a lot of new specifications. Core profile is, uh, is the cool thing. Uh, 10 is based on 11 and 17. So, so it's, uh, you can certify it on 11 and 17. So it's kind of the, the bridge there. Uh, these are the resources. If you want to have, uh, I'll uh, distribute the slides afterwards. But the, the, the jakarta.ee is the only page you really need to remember. It's so simple, jakarta.ee. We even have a starter, and that's start jakarta.ee. So if you want to do like spring starter, just try it out with jakarta. Try start jakarta.ee. Uh, if you want to learn about jakarta.ee, I published a course on LinkedIn. And if you scan this QR code and you have a LinkedIn account, you, uh, or, or subscription, you can do it. If you don't have a subscription and want to try it out for 24 hours, contact me and I'll give you a, three, a free link. Uh, 